everyone, this is Matt and I'm here with Louise, who has been hands-on with the latest iteration of Man of Medan, which is the interactive drama horror from the guys that brought us Until Dawn. So Louise, we played this at EGX last year. Um, what's new? Yeah, so Man of Medan, if you haven't already seen anything about it, is about these five attractive 20-somethings. We've got, uh, we've got two brothers who are Alex and Brad. Uh, we have one of their other halves, Julia, who's going to get married. We have her brother, uh, Conrad, who's a bit of a sort of arrogant person that we'll talk about in a minute. Like you almost swore them. And we, Yes, almost. <laughs> and we've got Fliss, who is taking them out on a boat. Um, they're diving wrecks. And because this is a horror game, it really doesn't end, obviously, particularly well in the fact that the Man of Medan, which is a... Sort of rumoured ghost ship arrives and they end up on the ship and horrible things happen to them. So the Man of Medan is actually a real thing, right? It's yes. based on an actual true story. Yeah, so it's an urban legend. We're not into, I mean, it's obviously not fact. I think Supermassive have kind of said <laughs> uh, we're, we're taking inspiration from multiple sort of urban legends mm -hmm. and ghost stories. And it's really cool because this is the first of a series of what they're calling their Dark Pictures Anthology. So if you liked Until Dawn, you're going to absolutely love this. This is, you know, interactive horror. You know, I played, I played about an hour. Um, I can't really talk about what happened in the first 15 minutes or so because that's spoiled territory mm -hmm. but um, I did get to experience what happened uh, when they got on the boat to go and have a nice time diving and what's interesting as well is they spend time letting you get to know these characters they really want you to get to know these characters and what's new about it is if you want to do it alone that's fine but you can also play it with a friend so that is, is very cool. So for the first time, you've been able to play this very decision-based game. These, I mean, we've had years of sort of Walking Dead and Telltale games, etc. So being able to make these decisions and watch someone else make decisions. So I was playing with, uh, you know, the person that was sitting opposite me. We weren't communicating at all. But when it said, such and such is making a decision, you could see their face and then you could see their eyes sort of looking uh, okay. in different directions. That's cool. So they're playing it consecutively with you. Mm -hmm. So the guys were out on the boat and they were having conversations and even the small decisions of whether Conrad would flirt with Fliss, all of these things, you'd be making the decisions of how it's going to work. They were updating traits, updating relationships, and you know that much further down the line, mm. these are going to be the things that come into play because everyone can live or everyone can die. Perfect. So it's totally dependent on the decisions you and make. And this is all happening in real time like while you're both playing? Yeah, so that's, what's, that that's is... the interesting <laughs> thing. You cannot stop for a cup of tea. That's right. the most British thing. You can't stop for a cup of tea while you're it's playing your Man of Medan. So you'd actually have to say to someone, we'll, we'll play now, mm -hmm. because um, the sequence that I played that I can talk about, so when they go out on the boat, they're going out diving. And I stayed on the boat and I played as uh, Fliss and Conrad was still up there and Julia and Alex went diving. So they went over the side, so the person that I was playing with got to go to the bottom of the ocean while I stayed up top. So I was having conversations, I was looking at a radar, I was doing all these things. So they did something very interesting to keep me amused and them amused so that they then had a different story to tell when they came up, which was quite interesting. That's really like, cool. So, and that wasn't even scary things. You know, this on the surface, we had some pirates arrive and we managed to sort of scare them off. Conrad threw some cash everywhere, which really pissed them off and they then went away. Because he's a terrible <laughs> that, human being. He's is that a terrible, how you get rid of pirates? That's how he Just... got rid of them. He's like, oh, I'll pay for the damage. He started throwing cash out, which was right. terrible. So then when the other two came up from underwater, they said, oh, we didn't really leave the wreck as it should have been. Right. And there was all these things that clearly really happened under the water oh, okay. that we didn't actually see. So what's really interesting is knowing about those things and then talking about them afterwards. Right. And knowing as well that there's this extra element of decision. So what the devs are teasing for when you actually get on the ship itself is really big decisions, life or death decisions, mm -hmm. whether you save someone, whether you save yourself. <laughs> And when the minute that becomes your friend, it's going to be even more dramatic and ridiculous. If you saved me, you could have saved me, and you didn't. So I can't wait to play this. Yeah, with you. so on the, on, this will be fun. So on the surface, you might be just whether you're being nice or whether you're being controversial or whether you're making mm. these decisions, once it gets onto the ship, once it gets onto where they didn't let us go, mm. and, and where we were last year, which was kind of wandering around these fixed camera angles, all of yeah. these things, once that gets into play, there's going to be all these branching decisions that are going to be made twice as bad because someone else will be making them with you, which is quite cool. I'm really looking forward to that. So in terms of like what you saw of what the other people had done, was it really explicit about that stuff? No. Or was it just hints of like, you know, people looking slightly guilty about 
No. <laughs> yeah, you had no idea what the other person could see, mm -hmm. what the other person's decisions were. I had quite a sort of life or death decision of these pirates arrived on the boat to sort of to rob basically the stupid 20-somethings that had come to throw cash all over the place. <laughs> they arrived to do that and I could have made a decision as Conrad to try and escape. And mm -hmm. at one point, the guy sort of pretended to hand a gun over and you could opt to go take the gun or try and escape. Now, I thought he's trying to trap me, so I tried to escape. And then I did all these QTEs to dodge bullets and actually managed to get away on the boat. So I actually managed to make, in my short playthrough, presumably Conrad survive, but then he wouldn't be in the rest of the game. And the other person, while I was trying to escape, they were actually, it turned out, shielding someone else from being shot with a QTE because there's a lot of quick time events. This is a big you know, if you're not reacting, do not scratch your face. Do not. I, at one point, I put my hair like, no, no, don't do that because you will have, you will miss Everyone's a QTE dead. and everyone will die. And there was this one particularly cool thing of to stay calm, you have to use a heartbeat. So a heartbeat will come up on the screen, and you just have to meet that heartbeat. And otherwise, horrible things might happen if you don't keep your heartbeat static. So in terms of like horror stuff, it sounds like all the stuff that you've talked about is quite um, it's quite sort of realistic. Was there anything in there that was like particularly scary or not? I didn't see any of that. There was well, I saw what happened on the ship, which is scary. What happens on the ship before they arrive that makes it a ghost ship is scary. <laughs> but the decisions that I was making were very human decisions. Mm -hmm. They were live or die. That's who's good, one right? Time that's who's that, talking you know, about. that's sort of a like you know that's that's context you want in a yeah. horror game. And it's the kind of thing in a horror game that the more you do that, the more attached you are. So the more you're not going to want to lose that particular person. Drop it, Buster. And what's interesting as well is there's a person called the Curator who will be through the entire Dark Pictures anthology who kind of crops up every so often and says, hmm, you're doing very well. Or he'll say, you, you know, he'll introduce, oh, these relationships are interesting. And is sort of steering the direction and very much sort of sitting behind a desk and being very smug about the fact that you're very stressed about making any of these decisions for all of these characters. I love that as a concept. That really sort of harks back to kind of 1970s sort of anthology horror movies and things, which is obviously where the name comes from. Um, and that kind of makes me really interested about where they're going to go next as well. Like, well, What's very cool is they've not talked about where they're going next, but the, this new edition of co-op is massive mm -hmm. in terms of... Because everyone super plays... Super massive. Yeah, super... One might say super massive. <laughs> it's a huge I'm addition so to... You know, you, it wasn't stagnant, the decision, story-based narrative mm. uh, game by a long shot, but adding this extra element in. And they also understand that we all like to play Until Dawn together. So they've added what's called a movie night mode, where you literally, with up to five friends, because there's five characters, <laughs> you are responsible for each one of the characters and each one of their decisions. So you'll oh, get wow. a prompt uh, on screen that tells you when to pass the controller or, or pass the keyboard, and then you can play it all together. So it makes it the ultimate horror movie sort of adaptation of all time, which I'm very excited about. I can tell. Fantastic. Very excited. How long are you going to have to wait? August the 30th. So that's really not that far away. Unlike all the other games that we sit on the sofa and say, miles ahead. Nope, <laughs> it's coming out on the same day as Blair Witch on August the 30th for Horror Christmas. Amazing. Good month for horror fans. So thank you very much for that, Louise. If you've got any questions about Man of Manan, please pop them in the comments below and we shall try to answer them. And please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you know when our next video lands. Bye.